Coming up on Mountain News this morning, a few counties in our region could see a boost in tourism this summer thanks to hundreds of thousands of dollars in funding. And an Eastern Kentucky couple celebrates nearly three decades of love by bringing new life and tastes to the place where they first met. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning to you. 632 here. I'm Dakota Makris. It's Wednesday. Thanks for joining us and all this morning. Brandon, I don't know about you. I thought it was Thursday uh, when I woke up, but it was not Thursday. Our producer told me it's like, in fact nope. Wednesday. Exactly. So I'm just trying to speed us. You're trying to take us back in time. I'm I, trying to I was. And then and then Siri started talking. I had to tell her to, you know, you got Siri and then you got me in your ear talking. Exactly. I don't know how you deal with it. Listen, it's it's called multitasking. That's actually <laughs> what I'm doing right now. I so know we're uh, we're handling business mm -hmm. over here this morning. All right, let's take you down to London. First alert weather day. We're getting you ready for the severe weather that could impact us tonight and tomorrow. But this morning it's fairly quiet. Some traffic out there. Not a lot to see on the interstate this morning, but 58 down that way. 59 Manchester, Williamsburg, 59 Prestonsburg, some 40s over in Grundy, Wise and Jonesville in Southwest Virginia, but a lot more 50s out there this morning. Look at that swath of warmer air being pulled in behind that warm front that just went through a little while ago uh, last night pulled some of that rain through as well. 55 Hazard, 58 Huntsville, 60 Nashville, 62 Memphis, but 49 in Myrtle Beach, the nation's capital, 46 in New York, 56 in Indianapolis, but 50 in St. Louis and 44 in Springfield, Missouri. Breakfast forecast again, 50s out there this morning. Again, it should be a fairly nice day to be a breezy day, but get ready for tonight and tomorrow because that's when we could see some action when it comes to the weather forecast. We'll talk more about that and break it down for you coming up here in just a little bit, Dakota. All right, Redden, thank you. All several counties in eastern Kentucky could see a boost in tourism this summer. Our Keaton Hall has more on the new Tourism Triangle and its recent funding. Eight different tourism commissions located in eastern Kentucky recently joined forces and have now been awarded major federal funding. We decided to apply for the grant for a multi-jurisdictional project. The group known as the Appalachian Triangle of Kentucky was awarded $350,000 in federal funding to go towards a marketing campaign. It's a seven county wide, you know, branding initiative, marketing initiative to draw tourists, you know, into the I-75, 80 slash Harlan routes. Maggie Monholland with the Corbin Tourism and Convention Commission helped create the group. She says they're in talks with an advertising agency located in Louisville to help bring more tourists and their dollars to Eastern Kentucky. Our intent there is to work with them to create a brand and a marketing strategy that includes a wide variety of different marketing tools. Marketing including a video, social and digital campaigns, and a route card to help tourists navigate the triangle we can work together to create a multi-day visit um, and so really what we're trying to do is pull people off the interstate and send them to the ancillary routes in total seven counties are included in the group clay bell laurel whitley harlan knox and rock castle in corbin keaton hall wymt mountain news well, the group hopes to have the campaign ready by late spring to get ahead of the summer tourism rush. Well, staff members at Hazard Health and Rehab Center took to the streets yesterday morning to deliver singing telegrams for Valentine's Day. They sang to some residents, then headed to the Hazard Lowe's where they surprised an employee there. Staff members tell us they all love the week of Valentine's Day. We had our Valentine's uh, party here yesterday with our royalty, and it was awesome. We all enjoyed it, uh, especially the rural residents and getting their crowns. The nursing home staff say they had a blast delivering telegrams, and they hope to let their residents do activities outside of the nursing home soon. Well, for Valentine's Day, one Floyd County couple celebrated nearly 30 years of love by opening a local business. Lori and Ronald Wright opened Lake Drive Pizza and More, reviving the storied past of the building where they met 27 years ago. The space continues the style of the Giovanni's that was once there, giving the couple a walk down memory lane every day. 
I've seen some faces from 27 years ago come through, and that's been crazy. They probably don't remember, you know, 27 years to 27 years, but I can remember their faces. I served them food. Lori says it's already been a whirlwind of emotion getting the business running, and she's excited to see it grow. We have a very special love story to share with you this morning. It's one that plays out on old yellowed paper through letters thought to be lost, but were recently found. And to one Somerset family, it's a gift that brings an American hero of the greatest generation back to life during one of the country's most trying times. Amber Philpot shares that story. Joanne, don't worry about me. So here's wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Give my love to all. Lots and lots of love always, Jean. A good love story often stands the test of time, and Libby Morris grew up seeing uh, one love story play out before her eyes. They were very much in love. Um, they displayed it. They were always sitting together on the couch, and I, I was around a lot of affection. She's talking about her own parents, Joanne and Raymond Eugene Langford, or Jean as most knew him. The two were married 49 years. Growing up, she witnessed their loving marriage, but she also knew there was more to their story captured in something very personal from Jean's time spent in the Navy. Well, when I was growing up, my parents would get the letters out from time to time and read them and laugh and, and whisper and... Some of those letters were written from aboard the USS New Orleans, the ship where Jean Langford was stationed during World War II. My daddy never really talked about the war. But later in life, Langford's family was able to capture on video some of his heroics. You'd hold the barrel there down when I was you. <laughs> That's where I got my knees all busted. Langford was just 19 when he left Stanford, Kentucky in 1940 and headed off to the Navy, leaving behind someone very special. I think he wanted her to be his girlfriend before he left, and that slowly evolved through the letters that they wrote each other. Joanne, his childhood friend, was just 14, and over the next several years, Jean courted her through pen to paper. My father was a romantic, and he wrote beautiful letters, um, almost like poetry, and he dated her through these letters, and he flirted with her and over time the letters that were off limits to Morris as a child were lost or at least she thought they were but I found in a dirty storage building out back of the house these letters in a cardboard box Morris spent hours reading every word her father wrote watching the love story she already knew unfold from the start the letters captivated the whole family, especially Blake Morris, now a law student who idolized his grandfather growing up and the history he lived. He had a fascinating journey throughout the war, so I've, I've, I've always been trying to learn more about specifically um, uh, his experience in the war or World War II through his eyes. Blake has now set out to have those precious letters donated to the World War II Museum in New Orleans. I have a responsibility, as anyone does, is, is to m take these really interesting stories about history and about my family and make sure they're preserved. They are a piece of history, yellowed in time, but the story these letters tell will never age. For a man who talks so little about war, his words will live on. We have their whole story, and we have a, the history of, of the things that were going on then that many people will never know about. The story of the greatest generation and a Kentucky man's love for the woman who he vowed to make it home to. Write a line or two once in a while to let me know you're okay. I'll close for the time being. Always thinking about you. With love, your best friend, Jean. That was Amber Philpott reporting. Jean Langford was honorably discharged from the Navy in 1943. He went on to live a very successful, successful life and died in 2008. If you're wondering about Joanne's letters to Jean, sadly, they did not survive the war. Libby and Blake Morris say those cherished letters have now been digitized. And eventually, sometime this year, the actual letters will be turned over to the National World War II Museum in New Orleans.
642 here on this Wednesday morning, a mild start to the day. It is the literal calm before the storms, which will arrive late tonight and early tomorrow morning. So we're getting you ready for that with our first alert weather day, trying to give you some advance notice. But again, mild and breezy out there this morning. We've been seeing wind gusts of up to 20, 25 miles per hour and temperatures very near 60 this morning, except in southwest Virginia, mid to upper 40s over that way. Those gusts still cranking 22 Jackson, 28 Moorhead, 23 Logan, 25 Preston. 20 London Corbin, 25 Middlesbrough, and 24 in Williamsburg. So again, it's going on out there this morning, and it's going to be going on throughout the day. So just be aware of that. Mix of sun and clouds for now. Then we'll see those clouds increase tonight, and those chances for showers and storms increase in the overnight hours. And some of those could pack a punch. Dakota? All right, Brendan, thank you so much. Still to come this morning, a serious accusation is made against the mother of Brian Laundrie based on a letter allegedly written by her. Stay with us.